Good morning, and welcome to the 2019 graduation ceremonies for San Antonio Christian High School. During the presentation of the diplomas, we invite family members of the graduating student to stand when their name is called and remain standing while they receive their diploma. We encourage you to express your pride by applauding and cheering, but the use of air horns or other noise-making devices is expressly forbidden. Please stand for the posting of the colors. Please post the colors. You may be seated.
Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of uh, the San Antonio Christian School Faculty Administration and Board of Directors, it is uh, my pleasure to welcome you to the 2019 commencement exercises of San Antonio Christian School. Our graduation ceremony is a cherished school tradition and a pre precious Christian fellowship. We would especially like to welcome and congratulate our seniors. Congratulations, seniors. The stated mission of SACS is to partner with families to provide students a Christ-centered education while fostering a life of faith and service. Today marks the culmination of several years of academic and spiritual training. The discipleship process is complete. You are prepared for college, careers, and service. As you leave this ceremony today, your association with SACS will be that of alumni. For 49 years, Sachs has educated and graduated faithful men and women of Christ. I would like to welcome back and honor all of our alumni who are in attendance today. So if you graduated from San Antonio Christian School, would you please stand so that we could recognize you? <laughs> welcome back. Thank you for being here. While this day belongs to our graduating class, it's to be shared with those who have believed in them, endured with them, and sacrificed for them. We appreciate all of the parents, grandparents, siblings, relatives, friends, neighbors, teachers, pastors that have loved and supported these kids over the many years. We're glad you're here today to take part in this memorable event. Would you now rise and join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, you are good, faithful, and Lord over all. We invite your presence into this place this morning. We give you praise for these students, and thanks for the families, friends, and faculty here today who have invested immensely in them. We remember those who are not present with us, those who for years generated uh, deposits of love and support, encouragement, provision to make this day possible, but unfortunately are not able here to witness it. Would you fill this day with reflection and joy as these graduates look back and give them peace and purpose as they look forward? There are some who have struggled and been tested over the years, and there are others who have made it to graduation with very little difficulty. But in each case, Father, you have been actively at work in their lives, and we thank you for your mercy and your grace. We honor their accomplishments, and Lord, we seek your favor upon our time together today. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, the one who died, so that we might be set free. Amen. Would you please remain standing as I invite uh, our senior class chaplain to the stage to uh, initiate the pledges. All right. Please stand for the pledges. Everyone's already standing. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pledge to the American flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pledge to the Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believes. Let's pledge to the Bible. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. See, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam? 
Please be seated. The study of God's word is foundational in a Christian education and for spiritual development. Starting in pre-K, our students are asked to follow what the psalmist says in Psalms 119 concerning hiding God's word in their heart. Our elementary, middle school, and high school students practice scripture memory, enjoy integrated Bible curriculum, and participate in weekly chapels. Each school year, the Sachs senior class and the high school faculty choose Bible verses that they believe best represent their hearts and the school year. This year, the faculty has chosen Acts 1-8, which says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness, witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The senior scripture is from Joshua 1.9, which states, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. At San Antonio Christian Schools, we also value worship. Worship comes in many var varieties, and Sachs has some of the most talented young men and women you'll find. I'd like to now invite some of the Sachs students to the stage to lead us in worship. This morning, we just want to lift up a quick song of praise. Uh, and this song uh, is Death Was Arrested. And it's written uh, in the form of some of the Psalms wherein the writer acknowledges his circumstance, acknowledges his position, um, but realizes that God's grace is enough.
At this time, I'd like to invite Kaylin Cavano to the stage, our salutatorian, to give the salutatory address. Hi, friends. <laughs> there is no doubt that San Antonio Christian School has prepared us well for our futures, as demonstrated by the numerous cum laudes and chords shown today. However, I would be remiss if I did not spend my few minutes on this stage today honoring those who have gotten us to this point with their support and leadership. Teaching is a labor of love, and I am so grateful for the endless life lessons and advice that the faculty has poured into us during my 13 years at Sachs. Beginning in elementary school, Mrs. Adams exemplified how to have joy in all circumstances, and she made learning exciting with her bright colors and cheerful personality. She was an amazing woman who blessed everyone she encountered, and I'm so grateful to have known her during her time on Earth. In the fifth grade, Ms. Grossman also taught us the valuable life lesson to never fall asleep in public unless you want to wake up with your shoelaces tied together or lipstick on your cheek. <laughs> Mr. Axtell taught us that the key to making a lesson more impactful is the addition of a personal story. It was always a treat when he would teach elementary chapels. In middle school, Mrs. Moore taught us how to be a good friend and love each other well. She had us write compliments to each other, and those words of affirmation were a true source of encouragement. Mrs. Knighton taught us the proper way to write a research paper, and I still use her tools and tips in every paper I write. Mrs. Scarf taught us the copy dot flip method for dividing fractions, <laughs> which I continue to use even in calculus. I am grateful for teachers like these who go above and beyond to instill the basics which make learning easier and more enjoyable. My high school teachers hold a special place in my heart and have truly poured into my life over these past four years. Mr. Rohn taught us that sometimes you just need to wait. <laughs> Mr. Foley instilled the idea that knowledge is obtained through suffering. Dr. Sheets gave us numerous quotable life lessons, but the most memorable was the phrase, it's all about choices. He taught us that the life we live is directly tied to our decisions, both big and small. Mrs. Gentry taught us to go with God in all situations. Senior Deaton taught us how to discuss important social topics properly and respectfully, even in a foreign language. Mrs. Anderson has taught us the power of the word, no. <laughs> 
Mr. Kreiner reminded us that in life, it is best to have a balance of grace and truth. <laughs> Mrs. Jeffries concluded every class by saying, study, I love you, make good choices. Ms. Pierce taught us how to speak comfortably and professionally in front of others and successfully banished the word like from my vocabulary after my grade was penalized for using it. <laughs> Finally, Mrs. Ortenzi taught us how to try our hardest while also learning how to fail gracefully, knowing she was always there as our safety net. To all the teachers and faculty, thank you for going above the call of duty and investing in us in both academics and life. We could not be here without you today. Thank you to the parents of the class of 2019 for raising the students I have had the pleasure of growing up with and for the endless sacrifices you have made to get us to this day. Thank you to the class of 2019 for being my second family. I'm so very grateful for all of you. Thank you mom and dad for instilling the value of hard work and for being the best parents I could have asked for. Thank you Kendra for always being a great example and thank you David for always keeping me entertained. <laughs> Fellow classmates, as we continue on our separate paths, go with God my friends. Study, I love you, and make good choices. Great job, Caitlin. I'd like to invite the ensemble back to the stage for another worship song. As Ms. Sharon said, uh, we have one more song um, prepared this morning, and uh, this, this song has special meaning um, because it, it talks about the wounds um, that Christ received um, on the cross, but how God brought um, victory um, out of the dark place, out of the suffering. And there are so many of us in this class that have experienced wounds, experienced hurt, um, but it's just a testimony that God is not done yet that he's not finished working and that he can use what the world meant for evil um, to bring about good.
How about another round of applause for our talented seniors? Now I'd like to ask our valedictorian, Ms. Amber Teague, please come to the stage to give her valedictory address. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> what an honor it is to be here in front of you all today. I have to admit, when I first realized that I was going to give this speech, I got really, really nervous. And I spent about a day trying to come up with a plan that would entail me convincing Mr. Roan to let Michael Campbell, an incredible classmate of mine, give this speech instead of me. But I came to my senses and I told myself, oh, my Lanta Amber, just get it together. <laughs> <laughs> so here I am and here we go. I think most of us by now have heard of a pretty popular movie that's out. It's called Avengers Endgame. In the movie, there's a scene where Tony Stark visits his dad and he mentions a pearl that was given to him. In this pearl scene, he says, no amount of money can ever buy a second of time. Knowing that, I want to challenge each of us to think about this pearl and ask ourselves, what are we doing with the time we have, and how are we glorifying God with it? Knowing that I'm never going to get this time back, I want to use it to glorify our Father. I thought about some qualities that are important to take with us, whether we are underclassmen, a graduate, or a family member or friend in the audience. Many of us learn by using heuristics. An example of heuristic is an acronym. I came up with the acronym EKG to help us remember what I'm going to discuss. Many of you know, especially those of you who are a little wiser, that an EKG <laughs> um, measures the electroactivity of your heart from a physical sense. Now we're going to think of it from a spiritual sense. First, the E in EKG stands for example. What type of example are we setting to those around us? We've all heard the saying that actions speak louder than words. What type of example are we setting and what drives our actions? We all know we have the perfect example to follow, that of Jesus Christ. I once heard a preacher put it this way, you either follow Christ or you don't. If we are serving God and following Christ's example, then the example we set will be one that reflects him. We need to strive to follow Jesus' perfect example. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let our example always persuade others to come to Christ. The K in EKG represents kindness. Many of us have heard about the speech where the speaker, from one small act of kindness, chose not to end his life. Every day we encounter several, several people and we don't know their situations or struggles. By being kind, we have the opportunity to make a positive impact on someone. We are told to love our neighbor as ourself and what better way to do this than to be kind. By being kind, we are shining the light for our Lord. Think about a time when you were having a bad day. What helped you turn it around? I can almost guarantee that the actions of someone else, in many cases, help change our direction. Kindness. Remember that one small act of kindness can save a soul, and one small act of kindness can save a life. And being kind, we are glorifying our Savior. Finally, the G in EKG stands for gratitude. Every day of our lives, we need to strive to have an attitude of gratitude. In 1 Thessalonians 6, Paul tells us that we need to give thanks in everything. Regardless of our situation, we can always be thankful for the sacrifice that Jesus made for us and for all of the blessings, spiritual and physical, that God has given us. Look around this auditorium. We have so many blessings to be thankful for. We have friends and family who love us, and we have teachers and leadership who desire nothing but the best for us. We are all so blessed, so let's not forget to express our gratitude to our Father and to those around us. I'd like to finish by expressing gratitude. None of us would be who we are today without first and foremost our awesome God and with so many people around us. We have an incredible faculty at SACS, from counselors who are there to encourage us to nurses who will help you with anything, physical or emotional. We are blessed with teachers who are literally angels and reflect God's light and are willing to go the extra mile to make sure we understand our work. We have administrators who not only truly care about us, but about the direction of the school. 
We are blessed with coaches who want us to improve, not only as athletes, but as Christians. Thank you for all your time, advice, love, prayers, and your example. Thank you to all our church families. I know many of us are blessed with strong brothers and sisters in Christ. Always know how important you are to all of us and how much you are loved. Thank, thank you to all of our parents, grandparents, and families here for your continuous love, support, and dedication. None of, us, none of us would be here today without you and your sacrifices that you make for all of us. Thank you to my parents, mom and dad, for being my biggest fans and being so patient and loving with me. And to my little brothers, Walter and Wyatt, thank you for being the best little brothers anyone could ever have, even though I have to walk around the house waiting for the next Nerf gun sneak attack. You both always make me smile and encourage me so much. I want you to remember that through God, you can accomplish anything, and I believe in you. Finally, I want to thank the student body, especially my amazing senior class. Each of you contributes to this amazing environment that we call San Antonio Christian. We all love and support each other and shine the light for God. I want to encourage all of us to continue to do this always. Let us remember that we are together together, all in this through God. Thank you for making the last four years so beautiful. Guys, we did it. <laughs> so back to this pearl. No amount of money will buy time back. So what will we do with the time we are blessed with? Will we spend it following the spiritual EKG, setting a godly example, being kind to others, and having an attitude of gratitude always? I challenge all of us to wake up every day and follow Matthew 22, 37. Thou shalt love the Lord God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Honor and glor glorify him with all of your time because in the end, that's all that's going to matter. Thank you all for this honor. Thank you to my senior class and may the glory go to our heavenly father. Good morning. It's good to see all of you. Parents, families, students, board, faculty. It's good to see you all here today, especially our, uh, my own GMO class and, and all our seniors together. I have the honor of introducing Dr. Sheets this morning. Dr. Sheets uh, has many things to his credit. One of the most notable is in 1978, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. Now, in 1978, I was but a wee lad. <laughs> so I don't know what that meant. But Dr. Sheets did, and he's been walking with the Lord for 41 years. I think that is quite notable. Dr. Aubrey Sheets was born and raised in the small rural town of Thomaston, Georgia. After receiving his BBA from West Georgia University, Dr. Sheets worked in personnel and management with three major companies. After his conversion on January 8th of 1978, Dr. Sheets began sensing not only a call to ministry, but also the call to preparation. After receiving both his Master of Divinity and Doctor of Ministry degrees, from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, the Lord led him to be the senior pastor of two churches in Georgia and the minister of education and administration of three churches in Georgia, Florida, and Virginia. While on staff in Kathleen, Florida, Dr. Sheets met and married his bride, Catherine Watson Sheets. In the years 2000 and 2003 respectively, God greatly blessed the Sheets household with the addition of Lillian and Jay Stephen. In the summer of 2015, the Lord led Dr. Sheets and his family to San Antonio, where he has been teaching Bible in 11th and 9th grade at San Antonio Christian School. It is notable also that the senior class voted to have Dr. Sheets deliver this commencement address and charge to the seniors, and it's my great pleasure to present Dr. Sheets. Thank you, Dr. Walters. Go dogs. <laughs>
Well, I was talking to Colin a while ago before all of you got here, and we're up here, and I looked around and said, man, this is a big place. He said, yes, it is. I said, I bet you can put a lot of hay in here. (laughs) Uh, I I bet you can. (laughs) Would you pray with me, please? Our Father, we're so very grateful to you for being such a good God and such a good Father to us. I thank you for this class. I thank you for who they are. I thank you for what they mean to me. I thank you for what you've instilled within them. I thank you for the future you have for them. I pray your richest blessing upon them. I pray that you put your hand and keep your hand and guide them. Help them to honor you in all they say, all they think, and all they do. We love you, Father, and everything we've seen do today, we do it for your honor and for your glory. And it's in the name of our Lord Jesus, who is our Savior and our Sovereign, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Let me begin this morning by saying two things. Let me say to this graduate class, thank you. Thank you very much for extending to me this really great honor that I have to be able up here to speak to you this morning. It is indeed a great privilege and honor, and I really, really appreciate it. Secondly, let me say to everyone, whenever I stand to preach or to teach, I'm always reminded of one of the things that one of my homiletics professors told us in seminary. He was an aged and wise pastor. And he said, preacher boys, whenever you stand to preach or teach, stand up, speak up, and shut up. (laughs) And I will do my best to adhere to that this morning. It was during the fall semester that Lauren in the graduating class asked me if I would like to speak at this graduation. And, of course, my immediate response was yes to that invitation. Since that time, I've been praying and pondering about what the Lord would have us to think about during our few moments together today. And as I began to think about all of that, my mind went back to a Thursday morning. I believe it was August 10th, 2015, when this graduating class and I met for the first time. Graduates, do you remember it? I do too. It was your very first day in high school, and it was my very first day teaching high school. God in his goodness and in his grace had brought us from Macon, Georgia to San Antonio, Texas, where we began as what Bilbo Baggins would say was a new adventure. (laughs) And it was, in fact, for me, a very new adventure going from pastoral ministry to teaching Christian Bible in a Christian school, and ninth graders at that. (laughs) Well, as we begin that year, you or I, neither one knew exactly what to to expect. And my mind went back to one of those movies from years ago, Kindergarten Cop. When (laughs) those of you who are, those of you who have seen that movie, remember that Arnold Schwarzenegger was a, he was a rough, tough New York detective going undercover in the kindergarten. And after a few brutal days being overwhelmed by kindergarten, he went home and he flopped across the bed and he just said, oh, they're horrible. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I didn't know if my experience would be much better. <laughs> but the truth is it was. I only had to do that twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I've been pondering, and by the way, isn't that a great word, pondering? Add that to your vocabulary. As I've been pondering about what God would have us think about, I've been thinking about these last two years, and I've thought about some things. I thought about how scared some of you were coming from middle school and entering high school. I thought about how some of you expressed concern over learning, not memorizing, but learning and writing 12 or so scriptures. And how did we write them? Verbatim. Verbatim. Very good, very good. I thought about the zillion zillion times that my voice cracked trying to get used to the pollens (laughs) until finally I asked asked Michael, Michael, why is everybody laughing at me? He says, because your voice is cracking like ours. I said, oh, it (laughs) made sense to me then. I remembered our PTPs, our points to ponder, those things that we would ask a question and ponder them. See, again, a great word. And try to figure out how to live those and make those life applications. I remember repeatedly, and I mean repeatedly, telling you about how to actively listen. (laughs) I remember uh, on our test days how we would encourage each other with, another day, 
very good. And I remember these days, that some of those days, how they turned out to just be Jim Dandy. <laughs> but I'll tell you, most of all, what I remember is our discussion of Acts chapter 2. You remember that was uh, the birth of the early church and the day of Pentecost. Jesus had been crucified and the disciples were, were hiding in the upper room, fearing for their lives. This is how Dr. Luke wrote it. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. Now, as we were exegeting and as we were explaining that verse together in class, we talked about what Dr. Richard Jackson, who was a former pastor of North Phoenix Baptist Church, what he said, how he understood that verse. And Dr. Jackson said, I'm no Greek scholar, but as best as I can tell, what this verse really means to these early Christians was that they were not only together, but they were together, together. And the truth is, I'm not exactly sure how it happened nor when it happened, but sometime during that first year, you and I, graduates, found ourselves not only together, but we found ourselves together, together. And we're still that today. In fact, we had the T-shirt to prove it. And you know what? I'm wearing mine today. And then, as the Lord would have it, he gave us a second year together. That was your junior year. And I thought about things. Uh, I thought about us studying systematic theology. I thought about bibliology and theology and theology proper. I thought about ecclesiology, anthropology, soteriology, eschatology, and all the other ologies we looked at. I thought about the great impact that some of the different projects had on many of us, how our minds were broadened, how our spirituality was challenged, and how our apologetic was strengthened. I thought about us wrestling through the screw tape letters and being challenged by some of those lessons of the great mind and the great heart of C.S. Lewis. And I thought about those 12 scriptures that we exegeted and pondered and again learned verbatim and how we tried to find how to live those out in our life. And now here we are. We've come to this third and final time we have together, together, this time of commencement, this time of ending one phase of your life and beginning another. And as we have, I have been particularly asking the Lord what would be the last words he would have us to consider together because we all know how important last words are. And as I've been praying and pondering, he led me to, he, to 2 Peter 1.12 where it says, Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and have been established in truth which is present within you. So today, let us take the, last rem the, the remaining few moments we have together and be reminded of five truths that I would like for you to carry with you as you leave this place in your life today. Here's the first one. Graduates, as you leave this, pla leave this place in your life today, let me remind you to protect his name. Protect his name. It was Dr. Ken Hemphill, who was a former pastor of First Baptist Church, Norfolk, Virginia, and past president of Southwestern Seminary, and whole bunch of other stuff. He was thinking when his son graduated from high school and entering college, what would he say to him? What would be his last words to him? After praying and pondering, he finally came up with these words. He simply said, son, protect my name. Proverbs 22 one says, a good name is to be more desired than great wealth. Favor is to be better than silver or gold. Truth is, all of us, everyone in this building knows how important a good name is. We know how, how important and it's one of the most precious things we'll ever have. All you have to do is think about names like Jesse James and Adolf Hitler and Judas to know that that is true. So graduates, remember, whatever else you attain in life, do your best to attain and maintain a good name. However, much more important than you maintaining a good name for yourself, it is far more important that you protect his name. So as you leave this place today, in the words you speak, in the places you go, in the relationships you build, in the life you live, take the utmost care to protect his name. Secondly, as you leave this place in your life today, let me remind you to remember who you are. Remember who you are. As we search and understand the scriptures, we come to realize that Jesus knew exactly who he was he knew exactly what his mission was, and he knew exactly his role in this world, and it was to be the Lord and the Savior of all. 
But we also come to understand the radical call, and don't miss that, the radical call he places upon anyone's life who would come to him. It's very important to understand his call is not just a call to be baptized, nor just to say a sinner's prayer, nor just to join a particular church, nor, ju nor just to get saved, as we would say today. In fact, you can look all through Scripture, all through the New Testament, and you will not find one time where Jesus asked anyone to get saved. You will find, however, his radical call to follow me, his call to become a disciple, to be a follower of Christ, to be a learner of Christ, and become a doer of what Christ did. So graduates, as you leave this place today, remember who you are. Remember your agias. You are a saint. You are called apart. You are set apart when you are a separated one. And this means that you are called and set apart to live for him, to carry out his mandates, to live according to his principles, to bring honor to his name. As 2 Timothy 2.21 says, you are to be a vessel for honorable use, set apart and holy, useful to the master. You are agias. Remember, too, you are ecclesia. That's the word we get for the word church. You are called out ones. Peter says that you are called out of darkness into his marvelous light. So as you leave this place, remember your agias and your ecclesia. So realize you're called out of darkness. You're called out of sin. You're called out of the world. So walk in light and not in darkness. Also remember that you are salt. Matthew 5, 13, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. So wherever you go and wherever you find yourself, just like salt, flavor the world around you for Christ. Preserve the good and the godly. Heal the broken. Create a thirst for righteousness. And yes, even stain the unrighteousness of those around you with your true righteousness. Not self-righteousness, but your true righteousness. And then remember, you are also light. Again, Jesus in Matthew 5, 14, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. And just like light, let Christ be visible in you. Expose and overcome the darkness that you encounter. Illuminate the goodness of God. And yes, just like light, sometimes you will irritate the ungodliness of those others around you by your righteousness. Again, not self-righteousness, but true righteousness. As we have often said in class, draw the line in the sand. Get right. Stay tight. At parties, when you're taking tests, when you're making friends, when you're dating, when you're being involved in business, when you're living life, remember who you are. And then thirdly, graduates, as you leave this place today in your life, let me remind you, be the person you know you ought to be, not the person someone else wants you to be. Be the person you know you ought to be, not the person someone else wants you to be. Romans 12, 2 says, and do not be conformed. Now that word conformed is, in the, is a present imperative and it literally means stop being formed or molded by. So he says, stop being molded by the world. Don't let the world society do that, but rather be transformed. That too is a present imperative and it, we get the word metamorphosis from it. Like a caterpillar moving from a, from a caterpillar to a beautiful, beautiful uh, butterfly. So it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Understand, graduates, that both in your college and post-college life, you will be pulled in many different directions. You will be challenged in many different ways, physically, socially, financially, politically, as well as other ways. Your parents, your pastors, your ministers, your teachers have all endeavored to instill in you who you ought to be and how you ought to live. And now, it's all up to you. At this point, there will be no one there to decide for you. No one there to make up your mind for you. No one there to tell you what you ought to do. And I know some of you are saying, hallelujah. <laughs> it's all up to you. You must do it all. As a country song came out a number of years ago, said, you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. As you leave this place today, know who you are. Know what you believe. Know who your ultimate allegiance is to. And in the words of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 6, 13, having done all, stand. And then fourthly, 
as you leave this place in your life today, let me encourage you to remember and live out the life lessons you've learned. Graduates, do you remember them? Do you remember the first one, honor God in all I think, all I say, and all I do? How about this one? Always do what's right, whether anyone else does it or not, simply because it's the right thing to do. How about this one? You can't put the egg back together again. Or how about if you don't possess your possessions, your possessions will possess you. Or how about treat others the same way you want to be treated? I am responsible and accountable for my actions or or lack thereof. Do what you got to do to do what you got to do. How about this one? Pay, then play. Pursue excellence, not perfection. This one you loved. Just because you could does not mean you should. You remember this one? You can say what you want, but what you do is who you are. And when we're talking about 1 Corinthians 10, 13, talking about when we're being tempted, the key of how to deal with temptations when you're being tempted is not knowing that God provides a way out, but the key is taking the way out. And then get right and stay tight. And then, of course, I guess the most often repeated life lesson and the fifth thing of which I want to remind you as you leave this place in your life today is this. Always remember, it's all about, it's all about choices. It was about the end of Joshua's life that he called all of Israel together and admonished them to remain faithful to the Lord. And he said it this way. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, then choose for yourself today whom you will choose. If you want to go back across the river and serve the gods that your father served, go ahead. Or if you want to serve the gods of the people in whose land you live, go ahead. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Peter supported that when he said in in 2 Peter 1.10, Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent, listen, to make your calling and election sure. Make your salvation sure. For as long as you practice these things, as long as you live these things out, you will never stumble. As we said repeatedly throughout our years together, together, it's all about choices. Who you will be, what you will do, the man or woman you will become, the life you will live, and the mark you will leave. So as you leave this place in your life today, choose to protect his name. Choose to remember who you are. Choose to be the person you ought to be and not the person someone else wants you to be. And choose to live out your life lessons. So in conclusion, let me simply say, it has been great being with you guys these, these past four years and particularly those two years. I love, I love you guys. Thank you. You have a very, very special place in my heart. And we will always be together, together. And the second thing, and I want you to remember this, as you go through your college and post-college years, always make good, godly, wise choices. Because remember, it's all about, it's all about choices. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Sheets. San Antonio Christian School has faithfully served the Lord since 1972, partnering with families to provide a Christ-centered education while fostering a life of faith and service. With the addition of this class, SACS will now have 2,200 alumni, adding 89 to this 2019 class. In the class of 2019, 
There are some students who have been with us continuously since kindergarten or pre-kindergarten class. These students will receive a Bible in addition to their diploma in recognition of their 13 or 14 years with SACS. Would the class of 2019 please rise? <clears throat> Dr. Walters, as principal of San Antonio Christian High School, I certify that each of these students has successfully completed all the requirements for graduation and is eligible to receive their high school diploma from San Antonio Christian School. Here we go. By the authority vested in me as superintendent at San Antonio Christian School, and based on the completion of all requirements, it is my very great privilege to grant you your high school diploma with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. At this time, I ask that you come forward and receive your diplomas. During the presentation of diplomas, we invite family members of the graduating student to stand when their name is called and remain standing while they receive their diploma. We encourage you to express your pride by applauding and cheering, but again, the use of air horns or other noise-making devices is expressly forbidden. It is a tradition at SACS to allow a parent who is either serving or has served on the board of trustees to hand their child their diploma. During the presentation of diplomas, Mr. Kevin Cavano, a former board trustee member, will be handing his daughter her diploma. Mr. Colin Blair, Mr. Steve Lyon, and Mr. Trey Moore, currently serving on the board of trustees, will hand their children their diplomas as well. In addition, our middle school principal, Mrs. Catherine Sheets, will be awarding her daughter her diploma. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. James Kreiner, senior Bible teacher, to come to the podium to read the names of the graduates. Julia Grace Adams, summa cum laude. Benjamin Carl Allison, cum laude. McKinley Reese Anderson, summa cum laude. Rachel Rosemary Arnold, summa cum laude. Reagan Adelise Beeman Banks. <laughs> Nadia Valentina Bibb, cum laude. Isabella Renee Blagg attended SAC since pre-kindergarten, summa cum laude. Tatum McKenzie Blagg attended SAC since pre-kindergarten. Parker Reeves Blair attended SAC since pre-kindergarten, summa cum laude. <laughs> 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 
Benjamin Matthew Blaylock attended SAC since kindergarten, cum laude. David Michael Brasenio attended SAC since pre-kindergarten. Kaylin Hope Cavano attended SAC since kindergarten, summa cum laude, salutatorian. <laughs> Shavon Dillon, excuse me, let me do that again. Shavon Dillon Calloway, cum laude. Michael Elijah Campbell, summa cum laude. <laughs> Paul Rowden Claflin, cum laude. Bell Madison Cole, summa cum laude. <laughs> Aubrey Sophia Covino, magna cum laude. Parker Alexander De Leon, magna cum laude. <laughs> Amy Carol DeYoung, summa cum laude. Samuel Ray Dieterle attended SAC since pre-kindergarten. Anna Elizabeth Dillashaw. Abigail Elizabeth Dotter, summa cum laude. <laughs> Zachary Thomas Dunn, summa cum laude. Caleb Bernard Durham Honer. <laughs> Madeline Rose Eckert, summa cum laude.
Hannah Elizabeth Edenfield, summa cum laude. Ethan Truth Elliott, summa cum laude. Evan Michael Farrell, attended SAC since pre-kindergarten, summa cum laude. Andre Robert Flores. Lauren Elizabeth Formby, magna cum laude. <laughs> Isabel Marie Gallegos, magna cum laude. Ryan Austin Galloway, summa cum laude. Gabriella Elizabeth Garcia, summa cum laude. Jacob Andrew Garza, summa cum laude. <laughs> Evan Michael Guthis, summa cum laude. Sarah Michelle Gwynn, magna cum laude. <laughs> Riley Faith Harris, magna cum laude. Taylor Stephen Harrison attended SAC since pre kindergarten, summa cum laude. Morgan K. Helms attended SAC since kindergarten, summa cum laude. Allison June Hoy, cum laude. Cameron Price Hull, attended SAC since kindergarten, summa cum laude.
Ryan Peter Hunt. Adrian Devin Lamas attended Saxon's pre-kindergarten cum laude. Tyler Jonathan LaRouche, summa cum laude. Christian Taylor Larson attended Saxon's pre-kindergarten. <laughs> Logan Alexandra Lee. Cameron Brooke Lapori, summa cum laude. <laughs> Casey Catherine Marie Lewis attended Saxon's kindergarten, summa cum laude. Sophia Celine Lopez, summa cum laude. Yeah. Madeline Grace Lyon attended Saxon's pre kindergarten, cum laude. Jordan Taylor Mahan, summa cum laude. Aaron Michael Malavolta attended Sachs since kindergarten, summa cum laude. Garrett Cameron Miller attended Saxon's pre-kindergarten summa cum laude. <laughs> J.C. Faith Moore attended Saxon's kindergarten summa cum laude. Ellis Graydon Nelson, cum laude. <laughs> Kelby Marie Nelson attended Saxon's kindergarten. Cody William Newton. Jacob David Nickel 
summa cum laude. Abby Marie Nolan, summa cum laude. Cameron Lee Oberhoff. Michael Sean O'Brien. Megan Elizabeth Pierce attended Sachs since kindergarten. <laughs> Megan Elise Penny, summa cum laude. Kobe Bryce Phillips, cum laude. James Raleigh Pittman. Michael Thomas Keyless attended Sachs since kindergarten, summa cum laude. <laughs> Joshua Cortland Ray, summa cum laude. Brandon John Richard attended SAC since kindergarten. <laughs> Tegan Lee Richter, summa cum laude. Veronica, <laughs> Veronica Anna L. Roy. <laughs> Seth Douglas Root, <laughs> summa cum laude. Sydney Catherine Rood, summa cum laude. Reagan Grace Sharp, summa cum laude. David Gabriel Segura. <laughs> 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 
Lillian Marie Sheets, summa cum laude. Sterling Ashley Silliman, summa cum laude. <laughs> Morgan Elena Simmons, summa cum laude. Rachel Catherine Smith, summa cum laude. Cameron Leah Sp Specia, attended SAC since kindergarten. Lennox Brandon Stevens. Amber Ann Teague, summa cum laude, valedictorian. James Ashton Terreri, magna cum laude. Gabriel Angel Tolentino, magna cum laude. Miguel Austin Villarreal. Lauren Alexis Whaley, Magna Cublati. Tiana Carol Wolfolk, summa cum laude. <laughs> Emily Ann Young, summa cum laude. Congratulations, graduates. You may now move your tassels. Graduates of the class of 2019, we have just recognized a significant accomplishment in your life. 
by presenting each of you with a diploma representing the completion of your high school studies. This is an important marker in your life journey. Congratulations and well done. As we send you out in faith for our Heavenly Father's service, it is our honor to humbly lay hands prayerfully on you today. Throughout the Old and the New Testaments, the laying on of hands is used to confer a blessing or to designate a person to a position of responsibility and authority. The purpose is to invoke the Holy Spirit and to set apart his followers for service, solely for the glory and honor of our Lord and Savior. In Genesis chapter 48, Jacob blessed Joseph and his sons and conferred upon them the heritage and the names of his forefathers, that they would grow into a multitude upon the earth. In the same manner, we bless you and confer upon you our Christian heritage. We pray that as you share your faith in Jesus, multitudes will know grace, forgiveness, and hope. In Numbers chapter 8, God's direct direction to the children of Israel was to set apart the Levites and lay hands upon them and commit their service to the Lord. We lay hands on you to set you apart for God's service. And in Acts chapter 13, Paul and Barnabas were also set apart. The early church did not hold on to them, but they placed hands on them and sent them out to the mission field that the word of God would be proclaimed. The body of Christ prayed for them, remained in touch, and praised God for the results. We lay hands on you to send you out that the word of God will increase. With this final act of laying on of hands, we pray you will continue to grow in Christ. You will stay grounded in the Bible's teachings. You will faithfully follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, and you will glorify God in everything that you do. At this time... I would like to ask each of the graduates to please kneel on your pillow. Will each member of the board of directors now come forward for the laying on hand of hand ceremony? Please bow with me now as we pray together for these graduates. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, we bow before you to give you praise as you are the creator and the gracious sustainer of all that is good. For each of the graduates we are celebrating here today, we thank you for all the years of answered prayers that have brought them to this exciting time in their lives. Lord, forgive us for the times we have been so distracted by lesser things that we have failed to give you all the praise that you are due. Thank you for the spiritual, physical, and mental development of these young men and women and for their growth, their safety, and all their many achievements. Father, as parents, grandparents, teachers, coaches, administrators, directors, and friends, we thank you for trusting us with each of these precious young lives. Forgive us when our example and instruction have not lived up to the godly standard of Jesus. In your holy word, Jesus took the children in his arms. He put his hands on them and blessed them. Abba Father, we commit these young adults into your arms for your blessings as you continue to grow and perfect them through your Holy Spirit. These students have sacrificed hours of pleasure for diligent study. These parents have sacrificed luxuries to afford their beloved children a Christian education. 
These teachers, coaches, and administrators have sacrificed personal time to develop these students' potential, and all have been patient, industrious, and obedient to you. Lord, we realize that no sacrifice we make will ever compare to the ultimate sacrifice you've made for our salvation. We thank you for the promise in your word that sacrifice made in your name will be honored by your grace. Now, Father, in your presence and by your example, we pray that your almighty hand also be laid on each graduate as a mark of individual blessing, setting them apart to apply their very special and unique gifts for your service, inaugurating and ordaining them, and sending them out to be Christ-like in all of their endeavors. As they go forward and embark on times of greater responsibility, greater opportunity, and encounter greater temptation, we pray that they will look only to you and always remain bold in their faith. Lord, we thank you for your promise to bless them with wisdom and discernment, with power and strength, and with peace that surpasses all understanding. Now, Father, as the mortarboards soon fly in joyful celebration, it is our prayer that all praise, honor, and glory be yours. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We're now going to enter into a special time of prayer. And uh, this prayer ceremony, I want to, uh, if you'll allow me, just give you a few words of instruction as we proceed. First, if you were one of the people that was designated to pray with a graduate, you would have received a letter assigned to one of three groups. I would like to ask that you wait till your group is called forward to pray with your senior. The second thing I want to ask is uh, that you only pray for the student or students who requested you to pray for them. Several teachers have been asked to take positions at the head of the aisles to help traffic and allow for instruction. At this time, if you're in the first group, please come forward to pray for your student.
in a few minutes when there's room at the front, I'll ask the second group to come forward. If you are in the second group that has been asked to pray for a student, please come forward now. In a few minutes, as there's room in the front, I'll ask the third group to come forward.
If you're in the third group that has been asked to pray for a student, please come forward. Thank you, everybody. We're going to conclude the prayer ceremony in the next minute, please.
do you want to conclude it? Oh, you can. Okay. You can finish it. I just can't remind me that I have to come up and bring something. Are you still waiting to play? I would kindly ask for everybody to return to their seats, please. I'd like to ask Senior Class President Seth Rude to please come to the podium. We've come to the time of the ceremony. We call the moving up ceremony. This is an exciting time for our underclassmen. Please celebrate with us. All right. With the eighth grade class, please rise and move up. I would like to welcome to high school the class of 2023. Please be seated. With the freshman class, please rise and remain in place. Congratulations, sophomores, the class of 2022. seated. Now would the sophomores please rise and remain in place. Congratulations juniors, the class of 2021. And please be seated. At this time I would like to invite Catherine Price, the upcoming senior class president, to join me on stage. It has been my privilege to serve as the president of the class of 2019, and now I would like to pass the senior leadership to you. Please accept this gavel as a symbol of your new role. I pray that God will guide you as you lead your class. As a rising senior class leader, please direct your classmates. Juniors, please rise and move up.
I look forward to leading the class of 2020, and may God bless the coming year. Congratulations, seniors. Would you stand with me as we close in prayer? <clears throat> Let's pray. Father God, you're a good God. And we don't say that tritely. Lord, you alone are worthy of, of praise and you alone are worthy of honor. I pray that as we send these seniors out of, as arrows of light into a dark world, Lord, that they would embark to give you all the glory and praise in their life, that the things that they do would not be of themselves, but for your glory. Lord, I pray that your richest blessings over them, Lord, that you would guide them, direct them, and protect them. Guard their eyes, their ears, and their hearts. Lord, we love you, and we praise you, and we thank you for each one of these lives that we've been blessed with over the years. In Jesus' name, amen. I would ask, I would ask that you please remain standing for the school song and hat toss, followed by the recessional. Seniors, please pick up your pillows and come to the front and center. We ask that the audience members please refrain from leaving your seats until the seniors and faculty have completely recessed out of the auditorium. Once the seniors and faculty have left, you will be dismissed to join them in the foyer. Senior ensemble members, please remember to come pick up your instruments as soon as you leave the auditorium. Seniors, there's only one way to go out of this. Some grace and some truth. All right, grace and truth.
As the faculty leaves, I have this for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance to you and give you peace. Now go in peace and may the God of peace go with you. You are dismissed.